Hello biologists! It is time to review for the 2.11 mid-unit test review. We're going to talk about the types of bonds today. There are covalent bonds that share electrons, ionic bonds that do not share electrons, and hydrogen bonds that don't happen between atoms, they happen between molecules. So they're a little bit different. Hydrogen bonds are a little bit different. Covalent and ionic bonds happen between atoms. Hydrogen bonds happen between molecules. Here's an example of an ionic bond. The electron from sodium went over to fluorine here and stays with fluorine. Remember, ionic bonds are taken. The electrons are taken, not shared. So this electron from sodium comes over to fluorine and notice this does not show that the atoms are connected. They're separate. That's an ionic bond. Covalent bonds hold water molecules together. I just answered this question for you, but that's okay. Um, you can see that this electron is shared between the oxygen and the hydrogen. That's within the water molecule it's a covalent bond between the oxygen atom and the hydrogen atom. So covalent bonds hold water molecules together, the, the atoms within the molecule together. Polar molecules result because electrons are shared unevenly. Let's go back to this covalent bond. The electrons are shared, but they're not shared equally. So the, this electron spends more time with oxygen than it does with hydrogen. So because of that unequal sharing, this water molecule and any other polar molecule develops poles where this part of the atom is, the molecule, excuse me, is negative and this part of the molecule is positive because that electron spends more time around the greedy oxygen atom. That polarity results in water molecules making hydrogen bonds. So between the water molecules there are hydrogen bonds. They're not like real bonds, an electron is not shared. They happen because the positive end of one molecule lines up with the negative end of the other. So here's a positive hydrogen end, here's a negative oxygen end, and they line up. They don't share electrons here in a hydrogen bond. Within the water molecule, between the atoms, they do share electrons, but not equally. I know that's kind of confusing, but covalent bonds happen between atoms within a molecule. Hydrogen bonds don't share electrons. They happen because of polarity, because of equal sh unequal sharing of electrons and it's because the molecules line up positive to negative. That's a hydrogen bond. The difference between hydrogen bonds and covalent bonds is all of the above here. Hydrogen bonds are weaker. Hydrogen bonds occur between molecules, not atoms. Hydrogen bonds are because of unequal sharing of electrons within a covalent bond. Hydrogen bonds happen because molecules are polar. They have a positive end and a negative end. Electronegativity predicts if a covalent bond is going to be polar. We look at the difference in electronegativity. There's lots of electronegativity on this side of the periodic table and very little here. So if there's a big difference in electronegativity like between hydrogen and oxygen, an electron is not going to be shared equal and a molecule will be polar. Remember, polar molecules make hydrogen bonds. So if there's an unequal, if there's a big difference in electronegativity, you're going to get a covalent bond, but the electrons are not going to be shared equally and you're going to get a polar molecule. Or you might get an ionic molecule but that's another story. Polar molecules happen because one, 
one side of this bond is greedy. Here it happens to be oxygen. Here in hydrogen fluorine, it's the fluorine that's hogging the electron. The electrons spend more time on the negative side, so you get poles, and those poles line up with each other when you put all those molecules together. So you can see how water here sticks together, sticks to itself, because of those positive and negative poles within the molecule. Remember, hydrogen bonds are between molecules, not within them. I'll let you read these for just a moment. Water is an example of a polar molecule. It has positive and negative poles, negative, positive hydrogen end. There is a difference in the electronegativity between the atoms, between the highly electronegative oxygen and the low electronegativity in the hydrogen. They form hydrogen bonds between the molecules, not between the atoms. This is a covalent bond. This is a hydrogen bond. So all of the above is true. Polar water molecules are important in dissolving ionic bonds, like in table salt. Here you see how all of these water molecules can surround a sodium ion. And here this is sodium and chlorine lined up with each other in a salt crystal. And the water molecules come in and surround these ions. There's a better picture right here how the positive sodium gets surrounded by the negative ends of water and how the negative chlorine gets surrounded by the positive end of the water molecule, the hydrogen's ends. So the water molecules come in and dissolve that sodium chlorine by picking off the ions and surrounding them. This ability to dissolve ionic Ionic bonds is why water is sometimes called the universal solvent. And that's very important to life because dissolved salts like sodium chloride, potassium chloride, um, things like magnesium, calcium are all important for our blood and for our cells to maintain an electric potential. You can see here how we start with salt crystals. They start to get, those ions get pulled off the salt molecule and surrounded by water molecules and eventually you have all ions floating around in solution. And that's what's going on. This is what's going on in your blood as well. So water is the universal solvent. Ionic bonds dissolve in water. We need those electrolytes. The polar nature of the water molecule makes it easy to break the ionic bonds that are, exist in electrolytes. The stuff you need if you're an athlete because you sweat a lot. Many ions are needed for a cell to function properly. It needs to maintain electric potential much like a battery. We need a nice watery environment to pull up to make those electrolytes work. So water is essential to cells. Polar water molecules stick together. They stick to themselves better than they stick to other things. In this case, they stick better to each other than the water strider, and this is called surface tension. It's part of cohesion. Here, there's a perfectly round water droplet in space. It's sticking to itself better than the air. So when water molecules stick together, those are hydrogen bonds. Remember, hydrogen bonds <clears throat> are the negative ends aligning with the positive ends of the water molecules. It happens between the water molecules, not between the atoms. Water exhibits cohesion and adhesion because of these polar bonds. Adhesion is where water molecules stick to other things. In this case, they stick to the uh, small tubes inside plants, and this is called the capillary effect. Any small tube is called a capillary, but it ha this happens very often in plants, like celery. You can see these small tubes in celery. Cohesion and adhesion happen because of the hydrogen bonds in the water that happen between the water molecules. Water is so important to life, it's not organic. It does have protons, neutrons, and electrons, but they're in the atoms that make up water. 
up the molecule in particular, all molecules have protons, neutrons, and electrons, and all atoms. Many important reactions happen in water, and that's why we need water in our cells and in our bodies. The cytoplasm here, the outside gushy stuff in the cell, is all made of water. So we need that water. We basically are just bags of water. Water is not an organic compound because it doesn't contain any carbon. In order to be organic, you need what? This is an organic molecule. It's one thing bonded to four hydrogens. Carbon makes a molecule organic. If you don't have carbon, you're not an organic molecule. Here this is methane, it's carbon, bonded to four hydrogens. Valence electrons and carbon make our key to carbon's importance to life. Carbon has four valence electrons. Those are the electrons in the outer shell of the atom. The carbon atom has four valence electrons. So it can make four covalent bonds. You can see how these four valence electrons make four covalent bonds. This is pretty simple. It's just bonding to four hydrogens here. These four valence electrons make four bonds. Carbon makes huge and complex biological molecules because it can make four bonds. Think of your Legos. You can make more complicated things with your Legos if you have one of those bricks with more dots. If you have more dots, you have more places to attach things, you can make more complicated things. Lipids are organic compounds. Lipids contain carbon. They're fats, oils, and waxes. They're nonpolar, they don't have a positive and negative end, so they don't mix well with polar compounds. This is why oil and water don't mix very well. This is important for the cell membrane, and we'll learn that later. Water, on the other hand, is different from lipids. It is polar, and it's not organic. That's why oil and water don't mix. You can see how they don't mix well here. Water wants to stick to itself, and oil wants to stick to itself. The indicator we used for lipids was red, so it's very close to a red dye. And if you remember from lab 2.08, Sudan 3 is what we use to detect lipids. To detect car um, one form of carbohydrates, which is starch, we used iodine. So if iodine didn't turn this sort of dark purple, we knew there wasn't starch. However, this is a potato, so it did turn this nice dark purple, meaning there's starch. Here, someone's rubbing iodine on their arm, which doesn't have any starch in it, and it's its normal amber iodine color. Valence electrons are really important. They're the electrons on the outer ring of the atom, and they control what kinds of bonds and how many bonds the atom makes. Two things, what kinds of bonds and how many bonds. So valence electrons are very important. They kind of run your life if you're an atom. They decide your fate of what kinds of bonds you can make and how many bonds you'll make as an atom. And you can tell how many valence electrons from the periodic table. Let's talk a little bit about carbohydrates. Carbohy one kind of carbohydrates are polysaccharides. That means many, poly like a polygon. Saccharides are sugar. Starch is one example of a polysaccharide. It's many sugars hooked together. These big molecules are take a lot of energy to organize. It takes a lot of energy for a plant to make starch. And so those molecules contain a lot of energy when we eat them. We break them down to single sugar molecules here. This big molecule becomes very small. We're going to skip through here. I want you to remember right before we end here, carbon defines organic molecules. It has four valence electrons, makes four bonds. 
Water is a polar molecule. 